All right, let's get ready for part two of the Exacto with Mr. Wu. I think this one you'll really enjoy it a lot because he goes quite in depth with it. You find that? That's the time before Nikon F came to the scene. There, of course, you have the changeable lens. Now, like the Hasselblad camera, Hasselblad made camera bodies, but they never have any lens. Same thing with the Alpha, the Swiss. SLR camera. They make the camera, but they don't have lenses. So, Exacta make cameras, but they don't have lenses. But there's a pool of German camera lens maker that make the lens for them. So, the popular lenses that came from the Exacta were from uh, Zeiss and some other brand, quite a number of them. Even the French lens maker, Ingenieur, also make for them. So these were the size lens. This one, the low end, they have a very simple triplet lens. So this one is a Ludwig Merita. Ludwig Merita 2.9. So this is a simple one. Then this is a Tessa. Now during the war, Germany was split into two, east and west. So the Zeiss company was split also into two. So the, the size company that was on the eastern side became Yena. Cow size Yena. This is a transition. So they still got the name Cow size and they still use the name Tessa. But later on, they totally uh, dropped the Cow size uh, name and they just put Yena, Yena Optic. After the reunification, they, they, they joined back again. So this is a Tessa 2.8. This lens is a preset lens, so you can uh, preset the aperture. Let's say I want to use f8, so I put it on f8. So open up bright to focus, and before I take the picture, I turn. It will stop at 8 to make the exposure. So this is uh, what we call a preset lens. Then uh, later on, they have the automatic diaphragm, this one. Automatic diaphragm, you can see this is a plunger there next to the shutter. So you select the aperture, and then before you make the exposure, you will close the aperture first. Aperture will close first, then it fires. Okay, this fully automatic. All right. So you have this. This is a Tessa, also a Tessa. Then I have this tele lens, also a Carl size Yena. This is a Sona. 135 f4 so this also use the preset system yeah so you got 135 they have a range of lenses from 20 mm 35 28 up to a thousand and so on there were i don't think they will have any zoom lens but later on some japanese company also make ah you find that the next one i will do is a uh, top con now, Topcon is a Japanese camera maker who adopted the Exacta mount. So, today we don't find the Topcon. After the 70s, they, they, they drop off the camera market. But if, you, if your eye need to check in an eye hospital, you will find that many of the instruments for ophthalmology are Topcon. So, for eye measurement, you find a lot of Topcon instruments. And if you go down the road and somebody doing leveling on the street with the surveying equipment, you also find Topcon. So today, Topcon companies still exist, but they are doing uh, contactless measurement for surveying and also instruments for eye, eye care. So, but camera, no more. Right. The next round, I will bring the Topcon. So that's the only Japanese brand that can also use the exact amount directly. Other attachment you find is a microscope attachment. Clamp it on the microscope and then you can take picture. Now, because of this camera is so popular and the flange distance was a little long, you find that many cameras have adapter where you can use the exact amount. So some of it is the Konica, Konica camera, the Minota camera, uh, Canon, and a few others, and of course, all the modern mirrorless camera, you can get adapter. 
you even have an adapter to use this exacta lens on a Leica M, of course, with live view. So when you can have it on the uh, Leica M, then to add it up with another adapter, you can actually practically mount it on so many cameras. So the, these lenses don't have to go to waste. They can be put in a, to good use. Now this one is a Minota Bello, but I have a exacta mount attached. So yeah, this is the exacta to Minota adapter. This is a exacta mount. This is a Leica telephoto lens without the focusing mount. I, I just hot melt glue it here. So this is the lens without the mount. I put it on an exacta mount. So I put it here. Where's the red dot? Yeah. Yeah, put it here. So now I can mount it on the Minota camera and I have this lens to work for me. Then we have the extension tube. This is not the original German extension tube made by a Japanese maker but also well made. It's a, you can twist it out, it comes longer. So you screw it back, it is a shorter. You want it even closer, you remove the front and then you mount it here so it's short. This is an extension tube. So this one is for the Canon EF mount. So you can put the sector lens on the Canon EF. So it's very versatile, but the design did not change very much. And by the late 70s, the Japanese company did a lot of innovation and they, they over, overtook the competition. So then there's the decline of the German cameras, except for one or two. The rest are all folded up. So, uh, Mr. Wu, one more thing uh, with the German cameras. Um, somebody asked in the comments about the East German brands. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that and uh, kind of like what happened to it and what are a couple of the names? Okay, before the war, there were no East and West. They were all one. Then when the Iron Curtain came in, so there is the East and the West. So some of them were just caught in between. They were formally together and then they were separated. So they have to do their own things. They got no more cooperation and so on. Now the concept of the Eastern Bloc was they will make, they can make, they will make in quantity, but they lack the quality. So they don't have very good uh, R&D or short of certain materials. So they were good up to a point, but they don't have further newer development. And then after the war, uh, Russia and England took some of this blueprint of the German camera as their spoils of the war. So Britain took some, Russian took one, some. In fact, the Russian took the whole lot of the things from the size factory. So the early batch of the Russian camera were actually the size original parts they assembled in uh, Kiev or some other place. Then when the parts ran out, then they make to make the same and then they make the Russian made parts which were not so good. And same thing in Russia, they just make quantity, not quality. Uh, you find that one of the Russian cameras is the FED, F-E-D. They had the orphanage for these children who were displaced by war. So they gave the orphanage, they thought they want to give them something to learn a craft to earn a living. So they decided to make a camera factory where they were run by these orphan children. And the head of this, the guy who hated this was the 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 uh, KGB head, the spy chief. His name was Felix Adomonovich Szerzhinsky. That's why you got F E D. So he was looking after it and produced all the fat cameras, which was mostly uh, copies of the Leica screw mount cameras. So they produced a big number, but the 
quality control is not so good. So out of the many samples, some were good, some were not so good. But if you get the hand of a good technician, every camera you tweak it, then it will work well. In fact, one time there's one company in uh, UK that imported this camera. I think I can't remember the full name of the company. It's like TOE, something like that. So what they did is, well, they would take a batch of this Russian camera, but before they pass it down to the consumer, they, they strip the camera and, and check everything. They make sure everything worked before they sold it. So every camera got to make some adjustment. Wow, and you amazing. have the Soki, and you have the Zenit, and so on. So that was like that. They have the quantity, but they, they don't have the quality. Well, soon uh, we're going to start getting into uh, Leica's. And because I know that you're, you're quite uh, familiar with them and you're, you're quite the expert on Leicas. So maybe we can uh, give our viewers just a little slight tease on yeah. one of the old Leicas and yeah. maybe people yeah, yeah. don't understand. We, we have here know. is a Leica 3F, the, the second last model before the M came to the scene. After the 3F was the 3G. So this was a... In, in short, this is one of the Banach's camera. The, the how, how this camera came into being is that, you know, this is a Leica, the Ernst Leica Wetzlar. Ernst Leica is the owner of the company. Wetzlar is the town in which it was built. Basically, Wetzlar is the optical industry town. All the major optical companies were found in Wetzlar. And so, this is one of Banach's camera. They got a Banach's camera. Now Banach's joined the lights company to make microscope. So Leica was uh, mainly a microscope company. And they were making very good microscopes. And uh, Banach, Oscar Banach's day job is to make microscope. In his free time, he liked to take picture. Now, in his generation, the camera were big, either make of wood or metal. And after setting it up, you pack it up like a backpack, put it over the shoulder, and you had to walk. And Oscar Banak did not like that idea because he suffered from asthma. So he didn't like the idea of carrying a heavy equipment going up and down. So he told himself, why don't I make a uh, small camera with a small film and later enlarge it. So that time, the 35mm film, 35mm film already existed, but mostly for purpose of making movies, movie film. So he took that movie film and then he doubled the format. The movie format was half like this. So he doubled it. So today we call it the full frame, 24-36, the Leica format. So Leica started this format for the steel camera. So he made that around 1913-1914 for himself. And uh, nothing happened. Uh, then uh, after, during the first war, the sale of the microscope were going downhill. Their owner, uh, Ernst Likes, had this problem. So over the lunch at the meeting, he made a very quick decision. He said, we will build Oscar Barnard's camera to sell, to, to tie in for the low sale of the microscope. So to do that, they make many copies of the original uh, Leica. Now I don't have later. Next day, I'll, I'll show you the replica of the original Leica. So, they make about 20 or so copies. That is the, U Leica, the, the, the prototype Leica. They show it to the professional of the day. The professional all at one go in unison shook the head. They say, your camera won't work. It's so small. Our, look, compared to our camera, it's a Mickey Mouse. Good thing is that this Ernst Lights never listened to him. So, 1925, he commissioned the Leica camera to be produced. So, 1925 onwards, uh, this company also started to make uh, cameras. And you can see the rest became history. So, along the way, 
every other camera was uh, evolving around it. The first camera, the lens was fixed, non-changeable. Then later, they have a changeable lens, but it was not standardized. So every lens had to be custom fit to the body. Then later on, uh, they make the lens mount, screw mount, they, they unify it, they standardize it, so every lens can fit every camera. So they have this rangefinder. At first, no rangefinder, then have a rangefinder. Then you've got the diopter adjustment for your eye. Shutter speed, one second to 1,000. Knob wind, uh, very silent shutter. You've got two dials. These are the fast speed. And uh, you, you set the speed to the, the red one. 30 to 1, then you can set the secondary speed down here for the for the time exposure. Yeah, this is the one second. Then you can put in, yeah, this is 130. Yeah. So you got two dials. The range find you got the two windows at the back. One window to focus, one window to view. So you look here, you put the double image, then you look at the other side. To, to frame the picture. So that was the Banach camera. All right, great. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll soon have uh, a few f uh, film cameras from Leica that we can go over huh, in the future. So um, I know a lot of you guys have had some questions for uh, Mr. Wood. And uh, do, do you remember any of the questions uh, that oh. the... I, 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 I wrote it down, I think I, okay. you, you, you reply to that. All right. So if you have any other questions, just put it in the comments below, and uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Wu take a look at it and see if we can not answer some of your questions. So I want to thank you again. I know this is a bit of a long one, but um, extremely informative. And this is the kind of information that you guys will uh, never get or be extremely difficult to get unless you with people who are been in the business for for years and years okay mr wu thank you very very much right, and welcome. everyone will be and you're such a hit everyone loves you and we're looking forward to to more uh german and japanese and whatever cameras <laughs> are out there okay we'll see you next time bye mr okay, wu bye bye